Welcome to Real Global News, the daily newscast covering international stories and perspectives ignored by others. What would you ask an oil company? Quite a few questions as it happens. It's Britain's biggest company with massive political influence in the government. Though it was privatized by the Conservatives, BP has been dubbed Blair Petroleum. Though BP's chief executive John Brown resigned over his lying about his former lover, pressure from U.S. shareholders about safety procedures had already forced him from the company. The latest scandal merely means that Brown may lose up to 15 million pounds in BP remuneration. It was the Texas City refinery fire which killed 15 and injured 150 that led to an inquiry by no less a figure than former U.S. Secretary of State James Baker. The deluge of legal cases came as U.S. regulators probed irregularities over BP's propane business and the company's decision to halt production in its Alaskan Prudhoe Bay oil field because of a disastrous environmental record. Worse is the impact of a saber-rattling Vladimir Putin, who has indicated he wants to buy 50% of BP's Kovicta oil field, as well as others, would be made on the Kremlin's terms. It's a far cry from when BP was beating Exxon in the merger stakes, merging with Amoco in 1998, Atlantic Richfield and Burma Castrol in 2000. BP had already been linked to Colombia's death squads. Its Casanara field is estimated to be worth around $40 billion. Deaths continue to be reported during 2007, with 26 workers disappearing and 21 murdered in the area as of March. It was around the time that George W. Bush took over that BP, as it advertised its commitment to environmental protection, funded moves to destroy the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska and drill in the foothills of the Andes. BP admitted dumping hazardous waste in Alaska in the early 1990s. The company's notable success has been in overturning public perceptions about the company. In 2001, the Sunday Times uncovered how BP and Shell had used an intelligence company with ties to MI6 to spy on Greenpeace and Body Shop. In 2002, in the wake of the Enron, Anderson and WorldCom disasters, BP-led lobby group the Organization for International Investment opposed corporate law reforms. BP campaigned against transparency and the need for executives to return payments when accounts were found to be wrong. By 2003, continuing trouble forced one of the largest ethical funds, Henderson Global, to pull out of any investment in BP. In the same year, Californian authorities sued BP for alleged air quality violations in LA. Within two years, the company was lobbying in Washington to block greenhouse gas emission legislation. Also in 2003, a panel of U.S. experts led by George Mitchell, the U.S. Senator, warned that using the Indonesian military to guard its $2 billion gas scheme could trigger widespread human rights abuses. But aside from the human rights context, shareholders may have more to worry about after having taken $60 billion from the company in dividends in the past half decade. BP's new CEO Tony Hayward has announced sharp drops in production estimates. Output will be flat this year, about 3.9 billion barrels a day, rising to just 4 by 2009, not the 5% BP had envisaged last year. Hayward is warned not to expect growth, even saying that Halliburton has been taking on workers that are not experienced enough to know their trade when it comes to oil services. So now that Tony Blair prepares to leave office, his Attorney General will have to decide not only whether his closest advisers tried to pervert the course of justice, but whether BP's chief executive perjured himself. The ties to Blair are very close. Communications at BP are headed up by Angie Hunter, Tony Blair's former gatekeeper and now married to Sky News' political editor. John Brown was knighted after helping Blair to quell fuel protests, and BP's policy chief, Nick Butler, is a Blair advisor. BP research is done by Philip Gould, Blair's pollster, the previous chairman of BP, Lord Simon, resigned to become a minister in the Labour government. After disgraced minister Peter Mandelson resigned, his hotel bills were being paid for by BP. Now that Blair and Brown are gone, questions over BP's share performance and possible future litigation are sure to affect its future. Welcome to Real Global News, the daily newscast covering international stories and perspectives ignored by others.